Okay, we are now live. I am just double checking that we are now on my correct Facebook page. If anybody is there, please say hello. I will see the comments in a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello. Yep, that's all working great. Okay, so I'll be able to see if you comment. So if you have any questions throughout all of this, feel free to message and we'll get back to you. So, hello anybody that hasn't ever met me before. I am Dana and I'm the person behind Smitten Weddings. And I am joined today by the lovely Julia. I'm loving Julia this side. Yeah. Uh, Julia is a celebrant. She's based in Cheltenham in Gloucestershire. And she specialises in bespoke wedding ceremonies for discerning couples. She works mainly throughout the Cotswolds, but she can be tempted to travel further afield. So if you like what you hear today, just get in touch with her and see whether you can tempt her out towards your way. So we're going to go through some questions that generally get asked to celebrants. So we'll start with, Julia, what do you do? What is a celebrant? <laughs> That's a good starting point. Um, and it's a good starting point because, uh, as you know, and as I know, there are many, many people who don't know what a celebrant does. So um, I, there are lots of things I do. I do different ceremonies for different occasions, different life occasions. So I do um, naming ceremonies. I do funerals. I do vow renewals, which are particularly lovely ceremonies, and I specialise in weddings. So that's that's my day-to-day -day job, creating and delivering. Yeah, great. And why would somebody choose a celebrant over a registrar? What are sort of the benefits that you can give a couple for using yeah. you? It's, I think it's about choice. I think that's the main thing. I think that's the main reason a couple come to me, because... Don't want to be tied by restrictions, by rules, by limitations. So they're they're a, a, quite a creative couple who want to have all the things that they've always dreamed of having in their in their wedding ceremony without without any limitations at all. And of course, if you go to a registrar, registrars have got much more flexible in recent years, but nevertheless, they are still they are legal representation uh, representative the local authority and so there are certain things that they have to say in a wedding and certain things they definitely can't include so I think it's all about choice I think that's why couples come to celebrants I think at the moment I think that there are couples who are discovering celebrants for the very first time because inevitably with all the postponed weddings uh, next year that have moved to next year there are probably more weddings uh, next year then there are going to be registrar slots and if couples have got uh, a particular date in mind and a particular venue they want to go to i'm finding that a lot of couples are making inquiries with me because they cannot they know they're not going to be able to pin a registrar down so i'm getting inquiries by default but what i'm saying is it will end up being the best decision you ever had to make yeah, I think a lot of people then also will seek sort of experience a celebrant wedding, which I think not many people do. And then from that, you can everybody will understand then sort of the, the beauty that you can create with a completely customised ceremony. Yeah. So um, how what sort of things could we do to enhance the ceremony? Um, I was thinking about this, you know, prior to today and there's I, there's one couple I'm working with at the moment. And obviously I can't give too much away because their wedding yeah, is. Of course. <laughs> the next year but they are they're going to have an Alice in Wonderland theme that's what they absolutely want for their wedding so they're going to have an Alice in Wonderland theme and because of that I've been able to work very closely with them and weave in all sorts of Alice in Wonderland themed moments in the ceremony and oh. that's that's the beauty of a celebrant because I, I work with couples usually over 12 to 18 months. So I have a long time to get to know couples, to get to know their favourite books, their favourite films, what, what they're passionate about. And all of those elements can be can be woven in. Um, the other one that I was involved in last year, another one that I was involved in, they were very, very keen to get as many family members as they could. They both had two siblings and they both had two parents and they wanted their family to be involved in the ceremony so that they weren't just sat passively listening. They were actually involved. So we did a unity candle ceremony, which I think many, many people are familiar with. So the idea of usually it's just the, the couple actually have their own individual candles that they bring together to light a, a one candle as their unity candle. But in this 
instance, we had four members of the bride's family and four members of the groom's family, and they all lit a candle. They lit the candle from each other, ending up with the mothers having the last oh. candle. And then the mothers lit the couple's candles. Um, so it was lovely. It was a really yeah. lovely moment. And, of course, it, it, it was wonderful for photographs. We had some beautiful photographs. Uh, so it's, it's just about incorporating as many things as possible to make it personal to the couple. I would much rather that the guests had some involvement than were just that listening for 20 minutes, really. So... Yeah, I think it makes it so special as well when you can include your parents and things like that, especially if they all sort of have a role and it's not this huge, scary role that they have to prepare for for months. It's just on the day we'd like you to be part of this this element, like holding a candle. And yeah. it's just so beautiful. That, those are the sorts of little touches that I always suggest to couples to think about anything that would be meaningful to you, because, yeah, like you said, it will make beautiful photos. And how amazing and so sweet that the mums then get to light the, the couple's mm -hmm. candle. That's just, it was lovely. That's an old romantic, so that would definitely probably make me cry. Yeah. The other thing that's, that's really nice about it is that um, it sometimes it gives the couple a moment to actually sit and watch something else. Yeah. You know, something that somebody else is doing. The couple, if I can include a moment in my ceremonies where couples can actually sit perhaps to one side and just, take in what's going on because when you're up there with, with everybody looking at you and for some couples it's really daunting isn't it mm. um, so if there's a moment where I have a, a little time where a couple can sit to one side and maybe they can just have a little whisper in each other's ears and they can look at great aunt Millie's hat and have a giggle um, it, it just takes the pressure off the couple for a moment and I think that's a really nice thing to be able to do as well yeah, definitely. I always encourage my couples to try and build in at least like 10 minutes here and there just to spend alone. And especially if you can do that during your ceremony, I think it just gives you that extra moment of making sure that you're sort of present in that moment. And especially if you're watching your loved ones do something for you, I think, yeah, they can laugh at whoever and be like, oh, I'm glad these first these people came. And oh, that single friend of mine trying to your single friend. Look at that. Like just any sort of casual little girl. Definitely. Definitely. Lovely. So obviously you're talking about how um, personalised uh, ceremonies can be. So can you do weddings outside? Can you combine your services with a registrar? Sort of where is where are any limits if there are any? The um, in terms of where you can have a celebrant ceremony, absolutely no limits. I mean, last year my ceremonies varied from castles to hotels to um, exclusive use venues to um, a riverbank by the side of the Thames. Um, okay. Is apple orchard so you can with the celebrant there are no restrictions because it's not a legal ceremony because you are doing your legal paperwork separately that just takes away all of the um the legal restrictions so you can you have your ceremony anywhere so if you've got a favorite if you've got a venue that you're going to and the hotel has a wonderful garden and there's a part of it that you absolutely love but it's not the uh, the, the registered registered part of the garden it doesn't matter you know if you've got a if there's a wonderful old oak tree and you would rather have your ceremony under that amazing oak tree that's where you can have it with a set with a celebrant uh, so yeah absolutely and last year I did have a couple of weddings where the registrars were also at the venue with me now we have to keep very separate there are lots of rules and regulations about where I can be and where they can be so um, in one particular one the couple did all of their legal paperwork inside the venue and then they came outside to me to have an outdoor oh. but it is very expensive so I never encourage couples to go down that route because you're paying for a registrar to come to the venue and you're paying for your celebrant as well whereas if you do your legal paperwork in the register office you'll pay a very small amount. I mean, I was just looking at Swindon register office yesterday for a couple, and the ceremony there in the register office with two witnesses is £57. So you can see that's a massive difference than if you had the registrar come out to the venue. Uh, so I always encourage couples to do the legal registration separately. It's just like going to register the birth of a baby, for example. Um, treat it like that get the, all the legal admin out of the way and then we can create something really special. Yeah, 
That sounds great. That's a good tip as well. So if couples are hearing all of this and they just love you, what does the booking process entail? How do they how do they book you for their wedding? Well, I'm I'm the sort of person who doesn't like to put pressure on couples. So I think it's really important that they find the celebrant that they really connect with, that they resonate with. Because the whole point of having a celebrant is that you feel a connection with the person, that you feel they're the right person to entrust your ceremony to. So I don't pressurise couples. I always suggest that we start off with a chat, just a chat on the telephone. And on my website, uh, I have a, a, a telephone scheduling um, button. It does actually say book me, which is a bit daunting because I always think couples will think they're booking me in that moment where well, you're not. You're just booking a telephone call with me. And that's a really good starting point. And yeah. obviously the, the situation as it is at the moment, it's been very difficult to meet couples face to face. But that, that is also an, an option as well. Most of my couples come from outside of the Cotswolds. So it's not possible you know sometimes they're from the states sometimes they're from london bath all over the place but so sometimes we'll do this sort of a meeting a zoom meeting or a skype meeting do all of that first and then i like to give couples what i think is their reflection time just time to think about me what we've said whether i feel like the right celebrant for them and then i ask them to contact me if i am i ask them to drop me an email to say yes We've, we've made our mind up, we want to go ahead, and then I'll send them the booking form, and then we agree um, We agree some sort of payment process. Now, in the past, I've always done a 50% deposit. With the circumstances as they are at the moment, I think that's really hard for couples, and also because many of them are booking so far in advance. So in the last few bookings that I've um, done with couples, we've actually done a payment, three three stage payment, because I that's that's more appropriate for the time we're in so yeah it's great to hear that you're adapting as well because it's similar for me I am the same you sort of connect with a couple and then make sure that we're a right fit because we spend so long with a couple it can be over a year um so you want to make sure that you're going to get on and that you have that sort of personal connection because the wedding's very personal you you don't just hire people to work on it you sort of you hope that you're hiring basically friends to to join you on the journey. So I'm very similar, and it's great to hear that you're adapting um, also to the circumstances. Like I think a lot of us. I think when you actually have that relationship, as you just said, you know whether it's with your planner or your, your celebrant, when you arrive on the day, there's a little bit of reassurance I think for couples because it feels like somebody's got your back. You know you're yeah. not they're doing it on your own, and you're not going to walk up the aisle and and there'll be a lovely registrar I'm sure but somebody you've never met before oh. it's actually somebody that you've known for a long period of time that you just know is 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 there for you so I think it's um it's a it's a very different relationship isn't it yeah I think it makes a huge difference just knowing that you've got people that you know are committed to you as a couple um I think it can make a huge difference um so on the wedding day what then happens like what from the minute that you arrive to the actual ceremony sort of what happens okay i only ever book one wedding a day um mm -hmm. because i i need to be focused on the couple that's that what, be crazy <laughs> yeah I, I want to be focused on the couple and also by only having one wedding a day it does mean that if there are any changes with regard to timings then that's not going to cause a problem for me i can just be completely flexible so um I arrive very early. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm one of those people who would much rather know that I was there and uh, than be worrying that I was stuck in some traffic jam or something. So I will always be there very early and just make sure that the, the, the whether it's the room or the outside space is, is set up in the way that we expect it to be. So that when that couple walk into their ceremony, when it begins, everything is at hand, whether that's um, a PA system. I mean, I have my own PA system. So sometimes if we're in a larger outdoor space, the wind or even a gentle breeze can just blow sound away. And, and you know, the worst thing is for your guests who are sat in the second from back row not being able to hear what's being said. So I will always you know, use the PA system if needs be um, and have a, a handheld mic. So if couples want it, they can say their vows with a, with a handheld mic as well. But it's all about, for me, um, just being organised. What's the quote? I think it's um, uh, failure to prepare is preparation for failure, and that's my absolute maxim. Uh, that's that's that guides everything I do. So, so 
there in plenty of time, make sure that everything is all right. Um, obviously, the groom usually will arrive first and spend some time talking to him, just trying to calm nerves a little bit. And then if it's that's coming, when, when a bride arrives, I will go and um, make sure that I have a little chat with her just before the ceremony. And I have to be honest with you, sometimes that's more about me than the bride because I'm quite a softy, I'm quite emotional. And there is that moment where the bride comes down the aisle with her father or mother or whoever's walking her down the aisle. And if I haven't seen her before that moment, I, you know, I can be quite choked at that moment. That can be emotional. So I find that if I've gone and had a chat with her first, I've seen how gorgeous she looks, um, then that just diffuses that moment a little bit for me. So it's probably a little bit selfish. They think I'm being, you know, very considerate and, uh, but I think that's probably more about me actually. I love that to be honest I think I'd be the same obviously as a planner I check in with couples sort of throughout so I will have seen the bride and helped her sort of walk around but it yes. gets me anyway like I, I've seen the whole thing already anyway mm -hmm. and you still when you see her walk down the aisle and you, she, they've chosen yeah. beautiful music and yes it's, it's a lot to take in even as suppliers. <laughs> I think you say we've we've formed a real connection with them, haven't we? You know, we we we've worked yeah. with them for so long. Um, so then, of course, I just deliver the ceremony. Um, just deliver the ceremony. Um, and it's it can range between twenty thirty minutes. Basically, it's as long as the couple want it to be. But I encourage them to look for that sort of length time rise, really, because right. I think if you're thinking about how long people are, are sitting. Um, that's about the right length of time for everybody to really enjoy it. So I deliver the ceremony and I will then after the ceremony, obviously the, the, the couple will have exited and all their guests will have followed. Most of my couples sign a certificate. So after they've exited, I will put their certificates and um, their vow. If they've had vow cards, I will always print cards with their vows on for them. And I, I box it all up into a keepsake box. And they have their vow cards, their certificate and a copy of the ceremony. So it's all boxed up, beribboned and, um, and then I go and find them. And of course, by that point, they're elated and they're surrounded by hundreds of people. And the last person they really want to speak to is me. So I usually make sure that there's um, some sensible person like a, a, a mum or a mother-in-law that I can give the keepsake copy to. Mm. I go. It's not my place to still be hanging around. So um, that's that's the moment when I exit, and that's when you know they can get on with enjoying the rest of the day. Yeah. Well, that sounds beautiful, though. I didn't know about the keepsake box, and that's just lovely to look at back on like your anniversary. So it's nice to have physical things from your wedding day. I think. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I also love how organised you sound. Honestly, it sounds like a dream. Um, <laughs> coming off my own heart. <laughs> So uh, how much do celebrant services usually cost? What are your sorts of price ranges? And there's, a, there's actually quite a large range. Um, and so the lowest prices I've seen have been around about 400, 450 pounds. And I know celebrants who charge 4,000 pounds. So they're, yeah. they're a massive range. Um, I charge 599 pounds. Uh, which is is a price that I feel comfortable. I feel that it reflects the work I do. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it's 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 always difficult, isn't it, trying to to pitch your price? But I I feel that there's such a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. I think some people might just think that a celebrant turns up on the day and delivers delivers a ceremony for twenty minutes. But actually, as you well know, I mean there are hours of preparation and meetings and writing and drafting and, and dealing with lots of emails and making sure that that couples feel comfortable and relaxed and not stressed and so the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes it's like again it's like the swan analogy isn't it you know on the day you have that 20 minutes of perfect calm ceremony but underneath there's been that paddling for the last 12 18 months going on so um yeah so that's that's what i charge yeah, I think that's a perfect analogy. I think it's very easy to just look at a price sort of at face value, but yeah, it's, it's similar with people when not, they ask how much I charge because it's so bespoke. And uh, it's the hours behind it, it's the supporting couples throughout. And also you just talked about how much preparation you do on the actual wedding day itself and everything that you have to do 
Um, so hopefully people can see the amount of value that you get from that. And also it is basically paying for a year of an experience with somebody. Um, it is. It's, it's a journey. I, I just I had a booking yesterday and the last line that I wrote in the email when I was speaking to the couple was, now the journey starts. And that's exactly how I, that's exactly how I view it. it. It's a journey that we, we embark on. Yeah, so. I always talk about the wedding planning journey as well, because you always start somewhere and then it's a whole load of ups and downs normally before you get to the end, especially Definitely. now. But all of my, um, in terms of pricing, all of my prices are on my website because I believe in being very transparent. Um, I don't I don't think couples should have to search around to try and reveal what some secret price is, you know, so all of my pricing is on my website and also the breakdown of what that pricing includes as well. Yeah, I always think that's useful to sort of see the list of the sorts of things that you get. And I always go through that with my couples as well. So I think that's useful. It's good to know all the information is out there. Yeah. So people have decided that they want a celebrant and they're thinking about contacting a few. What are the sort of the key things that couples should ask their celebrant and think about when they're sort of choosing who's going to be right for them? Well, I think the first thing is just to definitely make sure you do talk to them. Don't just go on a website go on the Instagram photographs talk to the person because yeah. I think that you need to as I said before you need to make sure that, that person feels right for you and maybe even sounds right you know this is the person who's stood at the front of your wedding ceremony reading and delivering your wedding ceremony to everybody so you want to it, the person needs to feel right on all sorts of levels also always say to couples that I think it's really worth exploring what are the extras that you have to pay for um, because I know that some celebrants will some of the little uh, ceremonies that we've just described things like a unity candle um, some of my Alice in Wonderland little tweaks that I've got coming up you need to find out whether those things are things that you will have to pay for as extras on top of the cost of the celebrant whether they're included so I think that's also um, something else to think about as well. And there was something else that you said, here's a live for you. There was something else that came into my mind and it's completely gone now. So <laughs> it might come back to you, but yeah, that is the, the power of the live video. Things just go straight out of it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's always good to know. I uh, give my couple sort of a guide uh, if they uh, choose to do meetings without me um, of the sorts of things that they should ask and yeah, things that you need to make sure that you know what's included, what isn't included, what sort of extras remain. Remember, remember, go for it. <laughs> I remember what it was. Um, I often get asked by couples, what happens if you're ill on the day? So I think it's a really good question to ask the celebrant that you're talking to. What provision is in place so that if that celebrant broke down on the way or, you know, let's say was ill before the event, what provision is there in place to make sure that your ceremony will be covered? Now, I work closely with a couple of other Cotswold celebrants um, as you probably picked up from this organization is my thing so yes there is an excel spreadsheet uh, that, has, that has all of our weddings on it and we're very very clever at making sure that we know when the ceremonies are taking place so that from amongst those there's two other celebrants I work quite closely with but making sure that perhaps there's somebody there to cover and if that absolutely fails, that's my first my first port of call. But if that fails, I belong to a celebrant organisation. So I would immediately put out a call to my backup organisation, if you like. And I know that there wouldn't be any trouble in, in uh, getting someone to do the ceremony, which makes me think about insurance as well. Mm -hmm. Make sure the celebrant has got insurance. So... Yeah, things that you might not necessarily have thought about um, in that mad flurry of all the, the lovely things that, you know, the actual practical, what happens on the day if you're not there? Have you got wedding insurance? They're important things, aren't they? Yeah, very. And it's very easy to forget because you're so focused on the fun elements that sort of um, yeah. uh, the part of my role that I normally get because couples are so interested in the sort of how it's going to actually work. And then it's digging back into the logistics of, OK, well, how are they getting here? Is that likely to cause a delay? What if they are delayed? How flexible is the venue of the timings and all sorts of things like that? Um, partly why I'm so important on the, the wedding day sometimes. It's <laughs> things are always late. Somebody is always late. <laughs> so 
any couples out there just expect somebody to be late there it always is um and it's always fine but just be aware mm. not the fire. <laughs> the fire is great. it'll be like your arm or something because there's always somebody that you have to like sneak in the back i've had weddings before that it's yeah like a couple with a small child will be late and then you have to open the back door very quietly and sneak them in the back and make sure there's chairs ready just in case always always yeah. Well, all of that sounds wonderful and it's been lovely to talk to you. I don't think we've had any questions on the comments, but anybody watching this either now or on replay, feel free to comment and um, either me or Julia will go back to you. Um, and obviously of course, you can contact Julia if you want to know more. Um, I put links to her social media and website already in the link to this video, so you can go straight to her. And yeah. I think unless there's anything else you'd like to say to couples, you can leave it there. Just find out about the celebrant option because there are so many couples who don't know mm. and honestly, you don't know what you're missing. So just take the time to discover what the celebrant option is all about. Yeah, if you've not looked before, just Google celebrant weddings and there are endless amounts of beautiful things that you can do that look so fun. And I've been at so many shoots also that we've had celebrants and there's all sorts of things like jumping over the broom ceremonies and hand tying and it's all beautiful. There's all things you can do with sand. So definitely give it a Google if you've never heard of it. Yeah, so definitely. I think that about covers the celebrant topic. I think we've answered and thought about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for the opportunity. It's lovely to have a chance to chat to you. So, Yeah, thank you so much for giving me your time as well and giving all of the expertise and knowledge. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye.